President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden hosted a reception at the Metropolitan Museum in New York City on Wednesday. During the event, Biden shared words of from his mother, Catherine Eugenia Finnegan Biden, who once advised him to never bow, bend, yield, or give up. My message tonight is this we must never, ever, ever bow, bent, yield or give up. And most importantly, we must never lose faith cause faith in our ability can do so much," Biden said. A day earlier, Biden delivered his final address as U.S. President to the U.N. General Assembly, addressing the challenges the world is facing. I want to begin by quoting someone who I wish was here tonight, my mom, Catherine Eugenia Finnegan Biden. Growing up, my mom had an expression, a lot of expressions, she had a backbone like a ramrod, but my mom she used to say, Joey, remember, never bow, never bend, never yield, and never give up. Folks, as I said yesterday at the United Nations, I recognize the challenges the world faces. Ukraine, Gaza, Sudan, Haiti, war, hunger, poverty, climate change. But my message to you tonight is this. We must never, ever, ever bow, bend, yield, or give up. And most importantly, we must never lose faith, lose faith in our abilities to do so much. We believe anything is possible. No, I really mean it. But remember, nothing is impossible. And folks, look, in our time, we turn the page on the, on, on the whole range of issues. We turn the page. Nothing is impossible, as I said, but we turn the page. The worst pandemic in the century. We defended Ukraine as a tyrant threatened to wipe it off the map. We made the largest investment in history to fight climate change, the existential threat to humanity. And folks, time and again, I mean it sincerely, time and again, our nation and our world found a way forward. <clears throat> but make no mistake, it didn't happen by accident. Nothing was inevitable. It took people like all of you assembled here tonight, refusing to give up, rejecting the forces that pull us apart, believing that change is possible and fighting to make it so. Every single day, that's what you in this room assembled have done. I can say to you, I'm, I mean it sincerely, I've never been more optimistic in my life because of all of you, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it up. And every time I walk out of my grandpa's house up in Spain, you know, Joey, keep the faith. My grandmother would know Joey, spread it. Spread it, spread it, spread it. Folks, remember, Nothing is beyond our capacity when we work together, nothing at all. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all you're doing. I appreciate it very, very much. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken used an address to members of the U.N. Security Council Tuesday to slam Russia for blatant violations of U.N. resolutions over its invasion of Ukraine. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine, the victim. Russia fights for conquest. Ukraine fights for survival. If countries stop supporting Russia, Putin's invasion would soon come to an end, Blinken told the council members. Blinken also accused China of providing support for Russian aggression against its neighbor. Ahead of the meeting, it emerged the U.S. will send Ukraine an undisclosed number of medium-range cluster bombs and an array of rockets, artillery, and armored vehicles in a military aid package totaling about $375 million. Officials expect an announcement on Wednesday, as global leaders meet at the U.N. General Assembly, and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky uses his appearance there to shore up support and persuade the U.S. to allow his troops to use long-range weapon S to strike deeper into Russia. The following day, Zelensky meets with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in Washington. These actions by Iran, North Korea, and Russia have violated multiple Security Council resolutions. Resolutions that Russia voted for and as a permanent member, has a special responsibility to enforce. This is also not a one-way street. The more Russia relies on their support, the more Iran and North Korea extract in return. 
And the more Putin gives to Pyongyang and Tehran, the more he exacerbates threats to peace and security, not just in Europe, but in the Indo-Pacific, in the Middle East, all around the globe. As North Korea ramps up its military support for Russia, Putin has reciprocated with military commitments and with money. The two countries recently revived a treaty pledging to provide military assistance if either is invaded. In March, Russia used its veto to end the work of the UN panel of experts on the DPRK, which for 14 years had monitored the regime's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Russia's banks are helping North Korea evade sanctions, freeing up more funds for its unlawful weapons programs. North Korea and Iran are not the only ones aiding and abetting Russia. China, another permanent member of this council, is the top provider of machine tools, microelectronics, and other items that Russia is using to rebuild, to restock, to ramp up its war machine and sustain its brutal aggression. Now, some may ask how the United States or any other country helping Ukraine defend itself can criticize countries for providing military support to Russia. There is a profound difference. Russia is the aggressor, Ukraine the victim. Russia fights for conquest, Ukraine fights for survival. If countries stop supporting Russia, Putin's invasion would soon come to an end. If countries stop supporting Ukraine, Ukraine could soon come to an end. This brings me to the second step that members of this council can take. One of the council's primary responsibilities is seeking to peacefully resolve conflicts. As President Zelensky has said, no one wants peace more than Ukraine. The United States also wants to end this conflict. And before Putin launched his full invasion, we used every tool we could to try to prevent it, including right here at the Security Council. But the way the Council seeks to end this conflict matters. The UN Charter is crystal clear on this point. When fulfilling its responsibilities, the Security Council, and I quote, shall act in accordance with the purpose and principles of the United Nations, end quote. In other words, we must seek a peace that upholds rather than undermines the UN's core tenets. That's why all of us here have a responsibility to support Ukraine's call for a just and lasting peace to end Russia's war of aggression. A just and lasting peace must affirm the principles of sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence. A just and lasting peace must preserve Ukraine's right to choose its own path, its own allies, its own future. A just and lasting peace requires Ukraine's full participation and assent. A just and lasting peace must support Ukraine's reconstruction and recovery, with Russia paying to fix the damage it's caused. A just and lasting peace must address both accountability and reconciliation.